Hey you guys, Phoebe here from Little Grey Box with Matt behind the camera. Are you planning a trip to Singapore? A cultural melting pot, Singapore is famous for its humid tropical weather and unique mix of luxury and local experiences. To help you travel well, here are a few things we think you really need to know before you go to Singapore. Singapore is situated one degree north of the equator, right at the southern tip of the Malay Peninsula in the heart of Southeast Asia. It has an estimated population of 5.8 million people and its central location makes it an important stop for travelers. As somebody who has lived in Singapore and has a really big soft spot for it, there is so much to see and do there that a few hours or even a one night stopover it's not gonna be enough to see and do it all. Now there are four official languages of Singapore, English, Malay, Tamil, and Chinese, but there is a fifth unofficial language. The Singaporean Singlish local language throws some unique phrases in there, like la and just an ah uh every now and then. The local currency is the Singaporean dollar. Now you'll find that one Singaporean dollar is equal to around 72 US cents. I would just recommend that you download an offline currency app. The one we use is XE Currency. It is free, it works offline, and it's reliable. While you will find that cards are accepted at a lot of places they won't be in those local spots so if you do want to dine at a hawker center for example make sure you've got plenty of cash as somebody who has lived there i would say in my experience Singapore is always hot and humid. Yes, there are going to be times when it's slightly more hot and humid than others, but if you try to plan your trip around those, I just don't think you're going to have much luck. Now with the heat and humidity, you need to be so very, very careful. Make sure you are drinking lots of water. Make sure that you are wearing clothes that allow your skin to breathe. Make sure you rest often. And if you can, plan your days outside of those really hot periods. So when Matt and I visit, we tend to go out really early in the morning and and do a few things then come back to our hotel rest during the hottest part of the day and then head out again late into the afternoon now another great reason that that strategy really works is because things in singapore tend to open late and stay open late so you'll find that most shops open at 10 a.m but they're open until 10 p.m same with your hawker centers while the breakfast stalls are going to be open in the morning the good ones aren't going to open up until later one other thing i will say about the weather as well is to look out for storms remember equator one degree Singapore it is tropical and those tropical storms are no joke when it rains it is torrential but it doesn't mean that it's set in all day in my experience it tends to rain in the afternoon maybe you get a couple of hours of torrential downpour and then it clears up just fine but be prepared have an umbrella have a waterproof jacket or something similar and make sure that if you are carrying camera gear you can keep that safe from the rain too when it comes time to finding your way around singapore you've got a couple of options if you've got a little bit more money to splash then you want to go with grab which is like uber make sure that you download install and set up grab before you leave home we were recently in Vietnam and we didn't have Grab installed and because we don't have an international sim I had to get one of my sisters to register using her number so that we could get all set up and use the app. Now if Grab taxis are going to be a little bit too expensive or you want to balance those out with public transport Singapore's mass rapid transit MRT system is the best in my personal opinion the best public transport system in the world. It is safe it is clean, it is reliable, it's easy to figure out, and you guys, it's so convenient to use. So when you get there, you can, of course, purchase your tickets as you go along, or you can buy yourself an EasyLink card. I believe there's a deposit of around five or 10 Singaporean dollars. You load up your card with money, it gives you discounted rates, and then you just tap in and tap out as you go through the train system. Even if you're a real novice when it comes to train systems, this one's very easy to figure out. If you do want to take the guesswork out of it, you should download maps.me. That's one that Matthew and I use when we travel and it'll tell you exactly where to alight and which lines to use. Owing to the heat in Singapore, I do not recommend trying to get around on foot. Things may look very close on a map and maybe they are close, but when you factor in that heat, it's just not a good idea to try and walk everywhere, especially if you have little kids with you or you're a little bit older. In my experience, it's kind of like visiting a theme park. <laughs> it's incredibly safe. 
You're walking around, you're seeing these incredible buildings and most of them are covered in gardens and plants. It just doesn't feel real. There's a lot of color. There's kind of a childlike sense of wonder in the air everywhere you go. I don't know if that's just me. And then you have these amazing experiences, this great food. It just feels like a theme park. So while Singapore isn't known for being a budget friendly destination, it's a really, really fun one. And it's a place that I think everyone should visit at least once. Now with all of those basics, out of the way, let's dive into a few more specific things you really need to know before you go. Instead of eating at restaurants all the time, try eating at hawker centers where the food is delicious and a fraction of the price. And in my experience, the best food on the island happens at the hawker centers anyway. If you do like to drink, try and get yourself a hotel room with club lounge access. Singaporean hotels who offer club lounge access, the club lounges put on a happy hour where all the booze is free during certain times so you're gonna go in there make the most of it and then head out for dinner and avoid getting drinks while you're out if you're from north america you're going to be used to tipping everywhere you go but don't worry tipping isn't required in singapore instead just leave your plate empty your belly full and tell the kind auntie and uncle who prepared your meal that you loved it They'll be very happy to hear it. If you are visiting hawker centers, make sure you have a pack of tissues with you because tissues mark the spot. You can use them as your very own reserved seating tool. If you see a pack of tissues somewhere at a hawker center, that means that seat is taken. Don't move the tissues, they're not free, and don't sit there because some lovely little auntie's gonna come over and kick your butt and tell you to move. Trust me. Don't be afraid to get experimental when it comes to food at the Hawker Centers. There is so much good food there. Try it all. Eat family style, grab lots of dishes and share them among yourselves. It is cheap and delicious and you never know when you'll try something you didn't expect to like. If you are unsure where to go for food in a Hawker Center and it's all too overwhelming, just look for the queues. If there's a lot of people lined up, it means the food is good. Singapore is an island and everything is actually pretty close. So you can't really go wrong when it comes time to choose a location. Just make sure that your hotel is a very close to an MRT station and you'll be fine. Singapore is best viewed from above. So make sure that you find plenty of rooftop spots to visit. Go to rooftop bars if you have the budget. Otherwise, just review, visit a few of those great rooftop spots so you can get a better sense of the city. Now there is more to Singapore than just Orchard. It breaks my heart when I hear people saying that they're going and they can't wait to go shopping on Orchard and that's all they've heard about. Singapore is so much more than that and in my experience the best parts are the gardens, the parks, gardens by the bay, jewel, all of those kinds of experiences. So don't just spend your time in Orchard. Get out, see different sides of the island, immerse yourself in Peranakan culture, explore little India and eat all the food. Now I often hear people telling me about how their perception of Singapore is that it is incredibly clean. Yes, it's a clean city and yes, you will get in trouble if you do things like litter, spit your gum out on the ground, spit on the ground in general, but don't be intimidated by it. It's not this pristine, perfect wonderland. It is a city, people do live there, there is rubbish, it does happen. So just be prepared. It's probably not as squeaky clean as you think it might be. There are some tough laws around smoking. So you can't just light up wherever you like, especially not at restaurants and such make sure that you keep an eye out for designated smoking areas and adhere to those because if you are caught smoking in the wrong spot you could face a hefty fine now i've just covered as much as i could for this video but we have so much more detail and information on the little gray box website you guys we're going to have loads of links below for you and they cover heaps of things including where to stay hotel reviews must try food and the very best guide to visiting jewel at changi airport I've had so many people tell me they tried to visit and couldn't find it, and I'm pretty sure I know why. Now, if you don't already, be sure to subscribe and say hello in the comments below. Have a great weekend, and I will see you next week. Love ya.